It's great to have a chance to talk to you today. I actually have been uh, coming to the museum for many years, and I have a son who's now much older, but used to always be with me when I came here. I'm actually going to talk about some of the work we're doing at MIT, in which we're using nanoscale layers to build medicine into extremely thin films that can be coated on a very broad range of surfaces. And I'm going to give you two examples that we're using. One is actually a nano bio bandage. We're actually going to talk about how that addresses wound healing for soldiers and how we might adapt that for civilian use. And the second is on micro needles, and I'll explain that one very briefly. And we think it's going to be an interesting way to apply vaccinations. So first, I wanted to remind you of what nano really is. And uh, this picture is meant to help you out a little bit. Uh, you can see that tube that I drew here is, is just uh, representing a shaft of hair. Most of us have a hair shaft that is about 100 micrometers or 100 microns. A nanometer is, if you can imagine this, taking a hair and if you had a knife and you were able to slice along that hair and cut it into 100,000 even pieces along its length, if you can imagine that, that is the size of a nanometer. I gave you a few other examples on the bottom. Uh, the one that's my favorite is the period at the end of a sentence when you're reading, usually the normal size that you're reading. Um, that tends to be uh, in width a million nanometers. So this gives you an idea of how small nanometer is. Uh, it's actually the size of a medium-sized molecule. In our work, we actually build extremely thin films that are nanometer in scale. Uh, typically, these are layers that are 10 to 100 nanometers. And the way that we do this is that we take a water solution, and in it, we have a positively charged material. That positive charge is going to absorb to our surface, stick to the surface, which is oppositely charged, until ultimately the charge gets turned around. And once we have positive charge on the surface, nothing else positively charged go goes down on that surface because of repulsion. Like repels like. We rinse that substrate, and then we dip it into another solution. And that solution contains a negatively charged material. That negatively charged material gets attracted to the positive surface and absorbs until it becomes a negative surface. And once again, repulsion prevents anything further from absorbing. So only a nanometer amount can absorb each time. So we end up alternating plus minus plus minus in this fashion, and we build up these films that you see over here that have these alternating green and blue stripes. They represent our nanometer scale system. And we can continue to do this. We can build hundreds of these without any limitation. Now, what we're incorporating into these systems are drugs and other therapeutics that can go directly into a thin film. Now, why would we want to do this? It turns out that if we use a normal approach, and I'm a chemical engineer, I work with polymers. Normal polymers are the kinds of things, the plastics and things that we can use uh, for our everyday use. And if we try and put a drug molecule inside of them uh, and maybe use it to coat, let's say a medical implant, like an orthopedic hip implant, for example, um, we can only fit a little bit of drug inside. Usually, you can only fit a, a, a small number of molecules inside this large molecule. Then, when it degrades away, it releases that molecule. If you have a lot of molecules, they all release at the same time and in the same way. Now, if I use my nanolayer approach, instead of all polymer, half of the material or more will be drug. And what I can do is alternate a positively charged polymer that degrades with, let's say, a negatively charged drug. And I can build up layers. Not only that, I can build up layers that contain one drug, and then switch to another drug, and then switch to a third drug. And the idea here is that I can build a nanolayer thin film that can release each drug at exactly when I need it. So if it were an orthopedic hip implant, uh, imagine that the first thing I want to take care of uh, might be pain because the patient has just undergone a traumatic surgery and there's a lot of inflammation that causes pain. But I also want to eliminate any possibility of infection. 
and I can design these films to release over a long time uh, antibiotics. At the same time, I want to have something in there that allows bone and tissue to grow around the implant and make it strong, and I can actually incorporate that in a third layer. So this is the idea of the nanolayered approach, and we use it for a number of applications. Now this uh, Institute for Soldier Nanotechnology, we look at ways in which we can use these approaches to help soldiers on the battlefield. And it turns out that one of the major ways in which we lose our soldiers is actually blood loss. In fact, it's the leading cause of death. About 87% of deaths we've experienced in our most recent wars have been through blood loss due to a traumatic injury uh, on the battlefield. So uh, we actually want to be able to stop that blood loss. If we can stop it, we can actually get the soldier to a clinic and treat him. But if he dies on the way, then, then we've, we've lost hope. So what we're trying to do with this technology is find a way to rapidly stop the bleeding. So uh, there are some methods that have been used. Uh, one of them is shown here in this uh, picture. It's called quick clot, and it's actually a powder when you apply it to the wound, it actually absorbs water really fast. When it absorbs water really fast, it causes blood to clot, but it also creates uh, a lot of heat. And soldiers end up with second and third degree burns and scarring that can affect them for the rest of their lives. So it's not the best approach. Uh, what we'd like to do is find a way to stop that bleeding, stop it rapidly, and do it using very, very simple technologies. So what if we took a bandage and uh, we were able to coat it, coat that bandage with things that the soldier needs? Hemostat is a molecule that stops bleeding. So let's say we're able to introduce something that stops the bleeding and also introduce something that gets rid of infection and maybe even treat the pain. This is the general idea of what we're doing uh, with our nanotechnology. What I'm going to describe to you are some of these methods. We actually have a way of incorporating these materials. We use a degradable but very biocompatible polymer that's positively charged. We can alternate that with a negatively charged polymer. Uh, that polyanion is uh, one that is called chondroitin sulfate. You can see this in vitamin stores sometimes. It's actually a natural anti-inflammatory. You can get it from uh, crab shells. Okay, so this is one of those very nice, healthy uh, things that we can use. These will be our building blocks, and into those building blocks, we're going to incorporate our drugs. And our drugs include vancomycin, which also is positively charged. We can build a tower with plus polymer, and then the negative polymer, then vancomycin, and then our negative polymer. And uh, we can then see if that vancomycin, which is a very strong antibiotic, that can address both uh, uh, with many, many different kinds of infection is effective. The way that we do this is that we actually take that coated sponge and uh, we look at whether or not it can act as well as a vancomycin pill. So we take a, a cell culture dish, we plate bacteria on it, the bacteria will grow this solid white film. These are really millions of tiny bacteria cells reflecting light. And uh, we can see that we're killing the cells around the radius near where our coated systems are. This is the coated film. This is the vancomycin pill. We get the same effect. The coated surge of foam, when we cut it lengthwise in half, we can get roughly half the effect. And this is what happens when we don't have the coating. The bacteria grow all over it. So this is very effective. Now, if we take an electron microscope, and we look at what the sponge we're using looks like, it has all of these holes, all of these pores inside. So that we can actually build our nano layers. they're so thin, that they can coat the inside walls of the sponge without actually covering them. That's important because the sponge we chose to use here is a gelatin sponge that actually absorbs 40 times its weight in water. So when we use it for blood loss, it can actually help with the blood loss function by absorbing water without releasing heat, and now we only have to add our hemostat, and we'll have an extremely effective biobandage. Now, to do this thrombin piece, we actually looked at a different set of materials. Thrombin is a protein that actually is part of the blood clotting process in the body. And when you have thrombin released, when you get a wound, 
it actually causes the formation of another protein called fibrin, which causes blood clotting. And when you get that blood clotting to occur, you get uh, essentially the bleeding stops. So you want that blood clot. Now, we want to layer thrombin with something very natural and gentle because proteins degrade very easily if you treat them with acid, with base, so we need to be very gentle with this. So we take neutral water and we add a molecule from tea called tannic acid. How many of you have heard of tannic acid before? All right. And maybe a few of you who like wine, you don't know there are tannins in the wine, they're also in tea. It's actually a natural uh, antioxidant. Looks like this for those of you who like to look at molecules. And it actually interacts with our thrombin protein, which looks like this globular guy here when you take a structural model. These layer by layer into the film to form these very thin layers with huge amounts of thrombin. Because we can put multiple layers down, we get much more than if we just tried to coat it with thrombin by itself. It also holds the thrombin together so it doesn't come off, and it keeps it stable so we can store it and ship it out to soldiers, and they can wear it out on the battlefield in their pack. Um, now, if we actually release the thrombin, we need to see if it's still active. So we do a, a test tube test to see what the activity of the thrombin is, and it looks like when we put down more numbers of layers, we get more and more activity, which is what we expect. We also need to test these in animals. So um, we need to actually see what happens with bleeding. So we have a uh, pig spleen model in which we introduce a wound, we get bleeding, and we compress the bandage on the wound and see uh, after 60 seconds if the bleeding has stopped. If it has, then you have hemostasis. You stop the bleeding. If not, you compress again and do another 60-second cycle. It turns out that all of our films, even just 10 layers, which is 50 nanometers, stops the bleeding in these models. So it's very effective, and it stops it uh, when we look at the uh, activity at much shorter than 60 seconds. Uh, and we're looking now at a, a model that will allow us to measure that even more effectively. So this has uh, created a lot of excitement. Um, I'd like to show the students who do the work. You saw a picture of Anita. She was the first student to do this work. And Brian Sue is uh, the second student who's working on this project. And now he's developing uh, this vancomycin hemostat uh, combination. Now I'm going to discuss another project. The second project is about how we can deliver through the skin using nanolayers. Now you can imagine that we hate to go to the doctor and get a, a treatment that involves a shot because it introduces pain. Uh, but it's even worse for people who have diseases that are chronic, that require constant shots. Uh, and one of the ways in which we can address this is try to deliver medicine through the skin. Now, we can actually do this with nano layers, and this is something I've been working on with my collaborator, my fellow professor, Daryl Irvine, is in this picture. And uh, in this work, we want to look at whether we can layer a drug or a protein that can act as an antigen for a vaccine into a thin film and apply it to the skin and get it to absorb into the skin. We're particularly interested in vaccines. How many of you are, uh, you know, have been through several vaccine processes. I would imagine everyone has, and you know what those are. Well, we would like to replace that with uh, a very simple skin application. A vaccine works because you introduce a protein that you're supposed to uh, build up uh, uh, immunity to. So you can introduce this protein into the layer-by-layer -layer film and have it release into the skin. There are these uh, cells that are immune cells, called Langerhans cells, that will take up the protein, they will carry it to your lymph node, and then the cells there will start to generate antibodies. That's how you get immune. Now, uh, in our work, we wanted to do this with our layer-by-layer -layer technique, and we can apply it onto the skin. We would have to take um, of the mouse ear and tape strip the skin to remove the top layer because it was so tough to penetrate. One way of getting around that is to actually make a needle that is so tiny that it doesn't reach the nerves in our skin. You can actually develop micro needles. Those micro needles are so short that they don't get down to the layer where our nerves reside, and so compressing it against your skin, you don't feel anything. So I'm actually going to show you these micro needles. It is a degradable plastic that is uh, molded with micron-sized spikes. And on those micron-sized spikes, we're, we're going to layer by layer our nanofilm. So you see the rotating picture here. 
is actually a confocal microscope image in 3D of what the coated nanolayers look like. And this kind of snow uh, cone peak here are these microneedles coated with protein in a layer-by-layer -layer fashion. And these proteins are protein nanoparticles. Now, we're actually going to apply this to a mouse ear and uh, see this, that this releases directly to the mouse ear into their immune cells. The immune cells are going to take it up, and the mouse uh, can then become immune uh, activated. So this is actually the experiment. We take our plastic microneedles. We use actually a spray version of our layer-by-layer -layer process to coat these microneedles, as you can see here. We take the coated microneedles, we apply it to skin. This picture shows where we have little puncture marks. We can stain that. Then we can remove the microneedle. We leave the film behind. And this is all a painless process. The vaccine can stay there. We're designing them to stay there for months so that we can release the first and then the second booster. Um, I'm sure um, some of you are familiar with the concept of, of boosters for this work. So uh, the, the idea here is we have tested this in animals, and it works. So I've talked today about two different ways in which we can use nanolayers. We can actually apply it to uh, wound healing, and we talked about the application for soldiers. We hope that can absolutely be adapted to emergency rooms and hospitals. And we talked about microneedles for vaccines, which can get rid of the ouch uh, experience with vaccines and actually eliminate the need to come back for your booster. Um, we think this is also interesting for medical implants, catheters, uh, delivering drugs to the eye on uh, contact lens, and uh, several other kinds of therapies, including cancer therapy. So I'd like to stop there. I'd like to thank my group. These are all of the different students from all around the world who work in my lab. Uh, we're going on a summer boat trip in this picture. And uh, the people who funded the work, including the U.S. Air Force and Army, uh, and the Institute for Soldier Nanotechnologies. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you.